Shalom. I want to give all praises, glory, and honor to Yahweh, by Shimei Awashai, by Shimei Kakwadash, and double honors to our elders and apostles, a great millstone that taught us his truth. Peace, love, and salutations to the hopeful like Akim that's teaching and preaching his truth with all righteousness and sincerity. The Zaki Awasak today will be a back to the basics lesson, and this will be entitled The Three Greek Words for the Word World in the scripts and lord willing you be edified through the spirit and power of yahweh bashim yahweh shai which are the true names of the heavenly father and his only begotten son and of course it's through the holy spirit which is uh the angels all right which the angels channel this information through the men of the lord to preach unto those that dwell upon the earth all right pursuant to uh, revelation 14 and lord willing all right this ed lesson be edifying to the lord's elect so uh, i got three um verses i'll be going into i got one in revelation the third chapter john the third chapter and matthew the 24th chapter and the reason why um i'm going into this lesson is because number one you have newly tuning in akim that, that haven't heard you know these particular breakdowns and haven't seen us going to you know certain words concerning this subject all right and this is the blue letter bible which allows you to go into the languages that the bible was translated from to get a deeper understanding on what's written now the blue letter does go off so you do have to eat the meat and spit out the bones which means you have to spiritually discern it and um i'll start off with the you know the, the most well-known precept in uh, john the third chapter and um hey this word world could be a stumbling block to those who, who haven't got you know, these particular breakdowns explained to them. All right. So this is John and uh, a little background um, on this chapter. You had Nicodemus, which he was a Pharisee. All right. Not all Pharisees was wicked. Even Apostle Paul, he was a Pharisee. OK, um, when you hear about the Pharisees, it was addressing the wicked scribes and Pharisees. All right. You had Pharisees that believe and Nicodemus was one of them. So, you know, here it is. Um, Nicodemus came to our Lord Yahweh at night. All right, because, you know, he was a believer. All right. And he believed in the testimony of Yahweh Shah. But the point is, I want to get to uh, John, the third chapter in the 16th verse. It says for Yahweh so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, which is Yahweh Shah, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting light. Now, the only ones that's going to be believe in the Lord Yahweh Shah are Israelites. OK. All right. Let me get this real quick in uh, Psalm 147. And this is how you learn this precept upon precept, line upon line here, a little there, a little. All right. And uh, bear with me when my Internet is a little slow. But this is a. Uh, Psalm 147. And 19. I started at 18 to build up the vibration. He sent out this word and melted them. He causes his wind to blow and the waters to uh, flow. All right. And you can read this in second address 13. When our Lord Yahweh Shah, he's going to just send the word and laser beams is going to be shot out of the chariots and burn up the armies of the heathen starting off with Esau. All right. And then the wind is talking about the nuclear wind. You read it in uh, Revelation 7. You read it in Jeremiah 51. And then the waters flow. That's talking about. America being fully engulfed in flames when the missiles hit over here. It says he show up his word unto Jacob, his statues and his judgments unto Israel. So this information is specifically for the Israelites. He have not dealt so with any nation. And as far as his judgments, they have not known them. Praise ye Yahweh by Shimei Awashah. So um, this the word is shown unto Jacob. Right. Now, let's go over here to Revelation 19. Because one of the titles of our Lord Yahweh Shah is the word of Mosai. And then we're going to go back to John, the third chapter. The book of Revelation was written by Apostle John, which he was the best friend of our Lord Yahweh Shah. He was exiled on the island of Patmos for the controversial teachings of our Lord Yahweh Shah. He was sent there to the salt mines as punishment because it was heavy persecution on the church. This is, um, let me see. Uh, Revelation 19 and 11, it says, And I saw heaven open, the spiritual realm, and behold, a white horse, our Lord Yahweh Shai, traveling on a so-called UFO. And he that sat on 
sat upon him was called faithful and true and righteousness. He doth judge and make war. Because our Lord Yahweh is going to bring the justice and judgment on the earth. His eyes were as a flame of fire and on his head were many crowns. And he had a name written that no man knew but himself. All right. And the many crowns represents Yahweh Shai coming to take down the kingdoms of the world. And that name, when you go into it in the Greek is Anoma, which basically means he had a position that no man could fulfill. All right. The Lord Yahweh Shai, he's mighty to save. Like you read in uh, Isaiah 63, you know, who was this that coming from Edom with dyed garments from Basra? I that speak in righteousness, mighty to save. So he has a name or he has a title. He has a position that no man knew but himself. It was only Yahweh Shah that can come and deliver the Israelites. Um, verse 13. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. And his name is called the word of Yahweh. All right. Not that he will be actually dipped in blood, but it's just prophetically representing that our Lord Yahweh Shah, he's going to get all into all involved into the judgment that's coming upon the world. All right. But the point is, one of his titles is the word of Mosiah. We read in Psalm 147 and 19 on down that he show off his word unto Jacob. So this information is only for the Israelites. And I'm going to get I'm going to pull one more. In Isaiah 47. Isaiah or Yeshua in the Hebrew, he was a uh, prophet during the time of the kings. Right. He was King Hezekiah advisor. And uh, a lot of prophecies, a lot of information in these books. So this is a. Uh, Isaiah 45 or 17, but Israel shall be saved in Yahweh with the everlasting salvation. Ye shall not be ashamed nor confounded world without end. So now, since we got those precepts, we understand that the world in John, the third chapter is speaking about the Israelites and chiefly the elect. So now let's get it for Yahweh so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, which is Yahweh Shah. That whosoever believe in him sh should not perish, but have everlasting life. And that whosoever is whosoever that's of the Israelites. Now, let's go, go into this word world here. I'm trying to make this lesson quick, right? It goes back to the Greek word cosmos, all right? Which is an apt of a harmonious arrangement or constitution, order, or government. All right, we were just reading in Psalm 147 that he show off his word unto Jacob. And his statutes and his judgments unto Israel, he have not dealt so with any other nation. So what's the order? The order is this information is for the Israelites and the Lord did not deal with any other nations. The government, all right, the government starts off with the Israelites. You can read Isaiah, the second chapter, and I believe it's Micah, the second chapter. All right. And um, ornament, decoration, ornament, the arrangement of the stars, the heavenly hosts as the ornament of heaven. So it's a particular sect. All right. You have just like with sports in the sports world, you have the world of sports, which encompass all sports. But then you have basketball. Basketball will represent cosmos because it's a it's an order. It's a it's a government. It's an arrangement. All right. So cosmos basically means a specific sect. All right. And it's talking about the Israelites. So um, John 3 and 16, the word world there in the Greek is cosmos. Now, let's go to uh, Revelation, the third chapter. And as I was mentioning earlier, the book of Revelation was written by Apostle John or Yahanan in the Hebrew. And here in Revelation, the third chapter, the 10th verse, it says, because thou hast kept the word of my patience, you believed in the prophecies, you believed in the testimony of the, of the Lord Yahweh Shah. I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. And that hour of temptation is the implementation of the MOTB. It's going to come a time where all of us is going to be presented with that MOTB. All right, that implantable technology that you buy and sell with. It's going to be an hour of temptation. But if you keep the word of the Lord's patience, you believe in the testimony of Yahweh Shah, the Lord will make a way for you to get up out of that. All right, but it's going to come upon a, all the world to try them that dwell upon that earth. So now let's go ahead and go into this word world here in Revelation 3 and 10. 
All right. You're going to see that there's going to be a different Greek word from the word world that we read in John 3 and 16. All right. So here you see the Greek word. There is oikomene. Oikomene. Right. Oikomene is the inhabited earth. All right. So oikomene means all the world, like we were reading in, in that particular verse. You know, our temptation that will come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. So if John 3 and 16 was speaking about all people in the world, then the Greek word there in John 3, 16 would have been oikomene and not cosmos. All right. So that's the third. That's the second Greek word. And then we have Matthew, the 24th chapter, which Matthew, the 24th chapter, it goes into two different time periods. It goes into the Roman siege of Jerusalem that happened in 70 AD, as well as our Lord Yahweh returning in these times. The scriptures call it the latter days. All right. So now as Yahweh is speaking to the disciples upon Mount Olives, he says this in the third verse. It says, and as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately saying, tell us. When shall these things be and what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? So once again, this chapter goes into two different time periods. Now, you do see the word world there. And let's see what Greek word is there. All right. Now, the Greek word here. As you see, is. Ion or Eon. Different word from the word world in Revelation 3 and 10. A different Greek word for the uh, that's different from the word in John 3 16. So Eon is the third entry, which is best described as word a period of time, an age. All right. So when it's speaking about the end of the world, it's not talking about the whole planet Earth being destroyed. It's speaking about the end of an age, the end of a time period, the end of a rulership. Now, when you read Second Edges six and nine, I'm not going to get it, but I will quote it. For Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. So Esau is the end of an age, end of a world, end of a time period, and after the Edomites rule, Jacob will be the beginning of it that followeth. After these Edomites go down. The kingdom of heaven will be established. All right. So when it's speaking about world here in Matthew 24 and three it's speaking about the end of the age, which that age is the age of the Gentile rulership. And the last heathen nation to rule before the kingdom of heaven is established is the Edomites, which are the so-called white race. OK, so that's three Greek words for the word world. And this should um, entice you to constantly look up words in a blue letter all right because you may see a word over here just like we saw in these three examples you may see a word in this chapter but if you go to another chapter and depending on the context if you go into that word it may be a different greek word there and it may not be talking about what you think it's talking about and of course we learn this from our elders and apostles of great millstone so back to the basics the three Greek words for the word world in the scripts. Lord willing, you are edified. I want to give all praises, glory, and honor to Yahweh, Ba'ashim, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashim, Rakakwadash. Shalom, Akin. Stay strong, stay watching.